Good morning. Welcome to this time together on Good Friday. Jesus, our Saviour, we are here this morning, not together physically, but drawn to your cross. We join friends, strangers, in mourning, in remembrance, grieving for the world at this extraordinary time. We join because we want to be with you, standing beneath your cross. And sometimes we will keep silence when words fail us, as you kept silence on the cross. So now we keep silence with those who suffer today. With those who live in darkness, fear, pain, despair. With those whose life is coming to an end and those who care for them. With those who are working and keeping things going, all those key workers. With those who live alone. And with those confined at close quarters who are used to going out regularly and now cannot. This is a traditional Good Friday hymn. This is a time of readings, meditations and prayers. Our first reading comes from Mark 15. The chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead of Jesus. What shall I do then with the one you call the King of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why, what crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. 
Pilate asked what crime Jesus had committed. It was a good question. Jesus had annoyed the religious leaders of that, there was no doubt. He'd been critical of social and religious structures. He had healed villagers, told stories to the crowd. He was probably a threat to public law and order. But was that enough to condemn him, to end his life? However, he would not defend himself. The storyteller was silent now, and the crowd was noisy, and Pilate handed him over to be crucified. So we pray for those in prison at this time, and for the prison officers and staff. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our second reading is again from Mark 15. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is the praetorium, and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews! Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff, and spat on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him, and when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. Soldiers, taking the chance for a bit of fun, they had a heavy day ahead. Soon they would have to put on their public face disciplined, controlled, efficient. But for now, a bit of a lark with the lads, with no risk of recrimination. Dead men tell no stories, and Jesus was going to his death. So we pray for those appointed to keep public order, for those attempted to abuse their power, for armed forces and the police serving across the nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our third reading is from Luke 2, and it takes us back to that time when Jesus as a baby was taken by his parents to the temple. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to call the falling, cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. She was going to be there at his end. She who had been there with God at his beginning. She was his mother. She had fed him and cradled him, watched over his growing up. Whatever he had said and done, he was still her son and she would not desert him now. Whatever, whatever pain of his she could embrace, she would. And in the meeting of their eyes, there was love as well as suffering. So we pray for parents whose children are in pain or trouble. For those children struggling to cope at this time. For families in high rises and apartments. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Our fourth reading from Mark 15. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. Simon from Cyrene, father of Alexander and Rufus, what a tale you had to tell your children. You helped Jesus. You gave him strength on the streets of Jerusalem. Willing or unwilling, you, Simon, have become part of his story and he part of yours. For you helped him when he needed you. What would we give to be Simon? So we pray for all those who are caring for the sick, even at risk to themselves, and for a willingness to serve you in friends and in strangers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our fifth reading from Luke 23. The people stood watching and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save, save himself if he's God's Messiah, the chosen one. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. And we look on from a distance, the distance of time and space and culture, the distance of a Friday morning in Shippey, in Torbay and further afield. And for us, it hurts to watch Jesus dying, even at a distance. It hurts to know we are being rescued. It hurts to know how much we are valued and loved. So we pray. For the depth of your love for us, we thank you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our final reading from Luke 23. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. For the sun stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. In your hands he placed himself, all that he was, all that he had ever been, all his beauty, all his obedience, all his loving. In God's hands he placed himself. He was returning to his father. He was going home. So we pray for all who have died today, for all who are dying, and for all who are unable to be with them for all who love them and will miss them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh, 
Lord God of hope, we ask that you help us all to live in hope in an unbelieving world, to live in hope in what is a frightening and scary time. Holy Spirit, be near to us and comfort us. Jesus, our friend and saviour, strengthen and protect us. And wherever we are, let's say the grace together so it resounds and reminds us to look forward to that time when we'll all be together again. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. <laughs>